And as we near the end of the year, I'd like to give a little update on Justice Department responding to our congressional oversight. Uh, I've written several dozen letters uh, this year uh, to the Justice Department. These letters not only address Justice Department misconduct, but they also seek records. Those letters include a bipartisan request with Durbin uh, to DEA. That letter declared uh, or related to DEA's uh, oversight of foreign operations, Haiti. I've also written a bipartisan letter to the Bureau of Prisons with uh, Chairman Durbin. I've sent two letters with Republican members to, with Republican members to Garland and Ray about uh, the publications of taxpayer information by ProPublica. I've asked about any investigations into the possible leak of hacks of that IRS data. The Justice Department and its components have failed to fully and completely respond to every letter I've written. And with the exception of one ATF matter, the Justice Department has failed to produce records that I've requested. As one easy example for the Justice Department, on January 19, 2021, then President Trump issued a memorandum to the Attorney General, Director of National Intelligence, and the Director of Central Intelligence Agency. Uh, that memo directed them to declassify certain crossfire hurricane records for the public uh, dissemination. Since February this year, my staff and Senator Johnson's staff have requested an update from the Justice Department on what's been declassified. We're in December and the Attorney General still has no answer. I've also asked the Department for records relating to Hunter Biden's October 2018 firearm incident where his gun ended up in the trash can near a school. The ATF used the Freedom of Information Act to refuse production of these records when that law doesn't even apply to the Congress. Now, do you understand that, that the lawyers at ATF don't even want to follow the law? They don't even know what the law says. I've asked for information related to Chinese nationals linked to the Chinese uh, uh, communist regime that are connected to some members of the Biden family. One individual, Patrick Ho, was not just linked to the Chinese regime, he was apparently connected to its intelligence service. Hunter Biden reportedly represented him for $1 million, even though the department already made public in a court filing that it possesses FISA information related to Patrick Ho. In response to my oversight request, the department said this, quote, Unfortunately, under the circumstances described in your letter, we're not in a position to confirm the existence of the information that is sought, if it exists, in the department's possession. Now, you understand, DOJ ought to be embarrassed by that response. Documents made public in the court system, uh, and they do not even know whether the document exists. I've asked the Attorney General to explain himself on these two contradictory uh, positions. He uh, have no response. Moreover, on February the 3rd, 2021, and March the 9th, 2021, Senator Johnson and I wrote letters to the Attorney General with respect to Nicholas McQu McQuaid, the then Acting Assistant Attorney General for Criminal Division and current Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General for Criminal Division. Our letter raised concerns about the fact that Mr. McQuaid worked for Hunter Biden's criminal attorney until he was hired by the Biden administration on January the 20th. This poses a clear conflict. The Justice Department has failed to answer whether Mr. McQuaid is recused from this matter. Notably, on June the 29th, 2021, I sent the Attorney General Garland a letter that raised concerns about Susan Hennessy's political bias against the uh, Durban uh, the Durham investigation. That letter was based on negative public comments made about it. Ms. Hennessy wrote works in the Justice Department National Security Division. My letter asked, in part, whether or not she recused herself from that matter. In response, Attorney General Garland refused to answer whether she has or had 
any individual any involvement in the Durham investigation. However, on Sep Senate Judiciary Committee October 27th hearing, oh, that was oversight, Garland stated that Ms. Hennessy, quote, has nothing whatsoever to do with the Durham investigation, end of quote. Now, if Attorney General Garland has publicly stated that Ms. Hennessy has, quote, nothing whatsoever to do with Durham, uh, then, end of quote, then why can't he say the same thing publicly about Mr. McQuaid and the Hunter Biden matter? I've also asked the Justice Department and the FBI about its, quote, assessment, end of quote, of concerned women of America. Public records cause concern that the FBI targeted this group without sufficient basis. I've asked similar questions related to the Justice Department, FBI's heavy-handed conduct with respect to Project uh, Veritas. No response on those counts. And you can go on and on, and that's the end of it for today. But we need answers to these questions. And I thank the chairman for a couple times saying that even the chairman hasn't got answers to his questions. So what do they respect of the executive branch about congressional oversight? I've heard Senator Whitehouse say exactly the same thing. So maybe all of you have that problem. Mr. Chairman. I yield. Just one moment, I'll recognize you, Senator Kennedy. And first, thanks for clarifying the Durban investigation. <laughs> Secondly, I agree with you. The Department of Justice is not as responsive in a timely way as it should be. I continue to push on that matter, and I hope we all will, uh, both sides of, of the table, to share that. Yeah. And finally, thanks for channeling the memory of Paul Simon with your bow tie this morning. <laughs>